Hey there, Rodney here, and today I'm excited on this edition of Ask Rodney to be able to address a question that came in to me, and the person that sent this wanted to know, hey, Rodney, do you take anonymous questions? And I want to answer you, yes, I do. I do take anonymous questions. So if you have a question right now, and you need to get something answered, and you need to ask it anonymously, feel free to send it in. In fact, I'm going to call this person Anonymous Ann. Hey, Anonymous Ann, you know who you are. Thank you for sending in a great question. Let me get some light on in here. And I want to address this question, and I want to talk to you about the, the question so you'll know exactly what it is. Here's what the question is. The question is, it says, hey, I am a grant writer for a nonprofit that has stayed afloat for more than three decades, although they've come close several times to having to close up shop due to lack of funding. Last year was a stellar year for us in terms of grant funding, but this year we're not getting anything. I love our mission and programming with every fiber of my being and take a massive amount of responsibility in this decline. At what point do I just throw in the towel and let them hire someone else? I'm starting to see my paycheck as a drain to the dwindling funds. What would you do? Well, Anonymous Ann, let's sit down and talk about this thing. I'm going to share with you what I would do in this scenario. Uh, you know, this is kind of multi-layered. And first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the work that you've done. Thank you for the valuable contribution that you've made to this nonprofit organization. You know, talk to a lot of nonprofit leaders as well as a lot of grant writers. And here's something that I know. What I know is that many of you are making some valuable, valuable contributions. And this is another example of that. You've been pouring into this organization for a number of years. You've been bending over backwards to give your very best because most of us that are in this profession, grant professionals, are doing this not for the money, per se. You know, we have to get our basic needs taken care of, but there are a whole lot of other fields that you could have made a whole lot of more money in. But you're doing this because you, as you stated, really care about this organization with every fiber of your being is what you said. And so I want to thank you, first of all, for the meaningful contribution that you made and the resources that you've been able to garner to this point. That's not to be taken lightly or that's not really to be taken for granted. So with that being said, you've been pouring out and somewhere things just haven't haven't been coming in funding wise. And, you know, that kind of happens. Sometimes you have a cycle within a nonprofit organization where things go up and things go down. And it really, a lot of times, really depends upon the leadership. As you and I both know, there are a number of factors that kind of go into getting funded. But right now, here's what I would say to directly address your question. At this point, I would say really trust yourself, okay? And by trusting yourself, I'm really going to suggest, I know what I'm saying, that you do the following. I'm going to really encourage you to trust your gut. What is your gut telling you about this situation? And when I say gut, I'm talking about that deep part of you that is very, that it is very, that it's almost like a sixth sense. What is your sixth sense telling you about this situation? What is your the gut, that, that second part of the brain that they kind of describe that seems to kind of be in this kind of abdomen area? What is it saying to you? And I would really encourage you to listen to it, whatever it's saying, whether it's saying stay or go, that you would really listen to it and really honor it. Because sometimes our gut picks up on things that the natural mind by itself may miss or that you may just miss in your everyday going but the gut is picking up all kind of things and i would say first of all trust that the second thing that i would say is 
kind of remove yourself from the situation. And by removing yourself from the situation, in this scenario, to try your best to have an unbiased and a separate detached detachment from it so that you can make a wise decision, okay? And by wise decision, when you put it sometime on paper and look at it and you put the pros and the cons, that's often another good way to make an assessment about the issue. And I'm wondering if, if you have had an opportunity to do that right now where you've been able to say, okay, great, hey, here are the pros for staying, here are the cons for staying, and looking at both of them to see what, which one really makes the most sense. I believe if you do that, that you'll, you'll begin to, to see clearly what may be in your best interest to do for this. Now, you ask me a question. You say, hey, Rodney, what would you do? Now, the things that I just shared with you are the first steps to the things that I would do in the scenario. Uh, the other thing that I would do is I would really take into account myself, and you have to take into account yourself, but, but I've been in situations in times past where I have been too loyal. Now, I'm not saying that that's what you're doing in this situation. I'm just speaking from my experience. There have been times where I have been too loyal to the organization. I was more loyal to the organization than the organization was to me in some situations. And that's not a good thing. So what I'm really suggesting and going to encourage you to do in this scenario is to make sure that you're not being too loyal to them because now my phone is trying to talk to me. I guess both, you get an advice on both ends from my phone and me. But I really would encourage you uh, to ask yourself, are you being too loyal in this situation? Because here's the thing. If there's a ship and that ship has a hole in it. You remember that movie, The Titanic? Remember how they were in that and all of a sudden, you know, there was a hole, but the band was still playing, okay? The band is still playing, but the boat is going down. That may not be a wise thing to do. So all I'm saying is, is to give yourself some room to separate yourself from it and ask yourself some tough questions. In this situation, we want to take the passion and put it on the shelf for a second and ask ourselves, is this a wise decision for me to stay at this time? Or is it time for me to just go ahead and move on and see the handwriting that's on the wall and then start creating some other opportunities for myself, okay? Either way, at the end of the day, I would say trust your guts, which means you gotta be brave, you gotta be bold, you gotta be brilliant in your decision making. And as your heart was just saying, look at those pros and cons. And then from there, if you come to the conclusion that it's time to move on, man, own it. Because here's the thing, when an organization is what they call at will, meaning that they can let you go whenever they want to let you go, you're also employed at will. You can leave whenever you want to leave. So I, I guess what I'm saying is give yourself permission to leave if it's time to leave. If your gut says stay, I would stick around and give yourself permission to do that and fight through it. But, but remember, either way, you got a decision to make. It's your decision and do what's gonna be in your best interest. Did you hear me? What's gonna be in your best interest. And the organization's been around for a long time. If it's meant to be, they will make the proper adjustments, bring in the new people, and they'll continue to move forward with or without you. So with that being said, make a wise decision, be brave, be bold, be brilliant. Keep those questions coming. And if you found this helpful, Leave a comment. If you've got something else to add to it that may be helpful for, for my friend, please add to it below. And I'll talk to you next time. All the best.